Can I ask uh, what you're advocating out here for? We're advocating for gun violence. For gun violence? Yes. <laughs> for, against gun violence. Against gun violence, yes, right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, fine, this is the Pride Fund. They just hand this to us, stand gun violence. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you uh, propose to end uh, gun violence? Well, there's many things. My daughter's one of the organizers here, and she's been heading up this, uh, or working with this group of the students here to uh, create this National Diane event today. So, so like uh, awareness about yeah. the situation? Yeah, right. awareness, and they have a number of points and stuff that they've been working on to, to help uh, to end gun violence around the U.S. Uh, what do you think about uh, the, I guess, an affectionate of uh, gun-free zones that, you know, it seems to draw in killers in places where people can't defend themselves? Do you think gun-free zones are a way to end gun violence or it continues to promote it or bring in that kind of violence? Well, I, I, I'm not sure, but I think a lot of ideas are being, you know, uh, considered and I think that more talk needs going to go um, into and you know more debate, more talks uh, in trying to figure out what the best solutions are. Um, and I don't know that we have all those answers yet, but you know these kids are trying to produce some of those answers and give us ideas and keep it in our thoughts and to see where we, you know where we can go from here. Okay, so you don't advocate then like banning all guns? Then is that would be a correct assessment to say? No, just uh, banning certain certain guns that are you know uh, that are could be used in, ma in uh, massive. Uh, um, situations, or in, you know, in in situations where um, automatic rifles and things like that that are militarized weapons, I don't know that those uh, types of weapons are uh, to be in our hands. Uh, so are, you're aware that of all the mass shootings that no automatic rifle was used, right? So there's a difference between an automatic and a semi-automatic rifle, right? Right, right? right. right. So because automatic would be machine guns, and no machine guns would ever use in a mass shooting, right? right? Uh, so I think it's I think that's also part of the discussion, right? right. To uh, to actually locate and the, the correct terms to be used for this, right? Because right? right. I could call it like a modern musket, <laughs> right? right. right. Um, okay, say. So, um, all right, so looking at these situations and looking at what happened like in, uh, like today's the anniversary in Pulse, uh, that was a gun-free zone and the state of Florida didn't allow the patrons to arm themselves. And what I mean, people rely on needs that, those seconds to respond uh, took over, what, hours mm -hmm. for the police to kind of go in there. And by that time, many people have died. Right. Uh, do you think maybe perhaps then uh, the best form of self-defense should start at the individual level, right? Uh, you know, we can't really rely on government to come there after the fact. Mm -hmm. uh, no, if we, when we need them there in that very moment and instant. Uh, do you think maybe one way we can help end gun violence is to promote individual responsibility and uh, arming ourselves against would-be aggressors? Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. You don't think you agree with that? No. Uh, so you would I, don't, I don't know that more guns solve a gun problem. You know, I, I just think that, uh, you know, I've lived in a lot of different countries where there are no guns, or very little guns anyway, and uh, I think we have a lot to learn from those nations. Which nations would that be? Well, I lived in Norway. Norway? One. Yep, and, and not even the police there carried the guns. They were one of the lowest crime rates uh, in that country that, uh, you know, at the time when I was living there. Okay, so... So I think we have things to learn, you know, from countries like that. But there's countries that have just about the same, if not higher, gun laws, like Mexico, Honduras, Brazil, and they have vastly high murder rates, right? Um, London has more murder rates than uh, New York City, and they have one of the strictest gun laws uh, in, in Europe, I would say, right? Um, so, I mean, I, there are some examples, sure, but that looks not... I'm not saying you're cherry-picking, but I'm just saying there's all the worldwide examples where they have the same kind of situation, and, and it doesn't work. Right, uh, Australia just had a, a shooting recently. Grandfather just killed uh, the kids and the, and the wife, his family. Right, and uh, they've had uh, shooting since the gun back poor bands. You know, so it's not like a, a end all solution sort of thing. Maybe it's in the culture, maybe it's something else. But um, so, do you advocate then more gun laws then? Over on top of like the thousands that we already have. <laughs> I, I think uh, that it varies from state to state, and I think some states are a lot easier to get your hands on a weapon. I don't think it's as, uh, and some states uh, do a pretty good job with their gun laws that have made some movements in that direction. So I, I don't think it's fair to, you know, to make blanket uh, that we have strong, strict gun laws in every state in the nation. I think that varies from state to state. Yeah, look at the situation. And the cities that have... It's so easy for us to travel to another state and 
you know, um, and to um, purchase a weapon in another state and things like that. Right. Um, and so I think that's something to be considered as well. What do you think of the correlation of cities that have high, strong uh, gun laws, like New York City and Chicago, and still have massive high gun deaths, murder rates, mm -hmm. and find the correlation between uh, excessive amount of gun laws that prevents people to have guns themselves to protect themselves uh, associated with high homicide rates. Right. Well, I think there's a lot, again, that goes into uh, into that conversation. When we took a look at, you know, cherry pick just certain cities and stuff where they have high, uh, you know, rates of gun violence and stuff like that, I think there's a lot of factors that go into that. And then we need to figure out and study why. You know, I think we need to spend some of our research to figure out, I mean, the CDC has proposed doing a research into these things, uh, and putting money into their research, and I think that's a wise idea. I think we need to research why it's happening, get all the information we can, and make some informed decisions. Yeah, and, and you'll find the CDC rates that um, mostly it's related to gang, gang violence, mm -hmm. a lot of the shootings. Uh, they find like there's 327 million people here. I mean, divided by the 11,000 people that were killed by firearms, uh, mostly gang related, that accounts to 0.00003% of the population, right? So it's not as prevalent as like the media purports it to be. Uh, homicide rates have gone down continuously over the past decade in the United States, worldwide actually, right? Um, so what do you think about that? It's not as prevalent. Well, well I'm sorry. Your daughter's speaking right yeah, now? Okay, well thank you so much for the conversation. You've been really good at uh, yeah, talking about this. Appreciate it.